I'm Don. Today's video is kinda long. So I made this video long because hopefully this video will be your complete guide on how to use the Army Painter Speed Paint Mediums. If you're a long-time subscriber or much more patron, you know that I love mediums. As usual, this Warhammer painting is a commission work for a private collector. Today, we'll talk about how to maximize or really utilize your speed paint medium. In this video, I'll show you how to use the speed paint medium to blend your speed paints, use the speed paints or convert them into a glaze paint, and of course, use the speed paints to convert them into a wash. Hi, I'm Don. Welcome to my studio. This channel is supported by all these awesome brands. And of course, this channel won't be possible without the support of my patrons. Oh, by the way, I just created a Army Painter Speed Paint playlist. I've been using speed paints for just more than or a little more than three weeks. And I have eight I think this is the ninth awesome video <laughs> that I created painting with Army Painter Speed Paints. Once we hit like a month of using the speed paints, I'll produce a video that will have a proper review of these paints. Because I do believe you have to really work and paint a lot before you could do a proper review, not like use it once and then you'll have a good review. That's... that's... That's now how it goes. So my thumbnail says, do not wet blend. Do not wet blend with speed paints. Basically, in my opinion, I'm not a fan of wet blending because if you do wet blending even with the regular paints, not speed paints, at the end of the wet blending, you have to do glazes to really refine your wet blending. So I'm not a fan. I'll rather start with glazes or fat glazes, glaze layering, and then I'll do thin glazes instead of doing wet blending. I do have an old, like a couple of old videos, like trying to really explain how to wet blend properly and effectively and will yield you really nice results. But I'll, I'll put that in the description below. But I don't really recommend wet blending even with the Speed Paint 1.0 because you'll simply produce nasty textures. Unless you're really comfortable with wet blending of acrylic paints or regular or speed paints, mm, I don't really recommend it for learners. You see, in my opinion, you'll paint more efficiently if you like use the strength, like the strength you could maximize the strengths of each paint brands or each paint kind or type. And by maximizing those strengths, you produce or you paint more efficiently and you'll produce better results. So basically, if you need a really nice solid coverage, then you'll use your regular paints which has good coverage. And then if you need to do glazes and layering or glaze layering, I'll use my cuttlefish colors. But then again, if I want really nice speed painting like this one, I'll use my speed paints. So forcing each paint type to act differently, like forcing it to do fine glazes and doing like using paints that are not really formulated for specific techniques, will hmm, won't really yield you good results. But of course, you could work around with it. But then again, it's not optimal. So I started this project using Speed Paint 1.0, which reactivates. So you'll see here, I'm kind of blending and reactivating the edges of the Speed Paint with Medium. So can you reactivate with just water? Of course you can. But I feel, at least for me, I feel that I have more control when I'm reactivating with Medium. 
By more control, I mean it doesn't really run all over the place. So I feel that I have more control where the speed paints will flow when I'm using medium. Also, I kind of like how it adds more transparency, but you still see the very nice saturation of these paints. Mediums in general are like the binder. So you see, a paint is comprised practically of paint, pigments, and binder. And of course, some other stuff. But, but then again, the medium is like practically the binder, which is the combination, what, what completes a paint. So if you use medium instead of water, you use like practically another part or half of the part of the paint. So it dissolves the paint better. It kind of mixes better, way better than with water but then again of course if you don't have mediums water will work but for me medium is like the real my my go-to way to blend paints to do glazes or to basically transform paints into glaze paints and then even to do more washes but if you want a really really flowing wash of course you add a little bit more water I hope you don't like you don't find the video confusing especially if you're a first time viewer of my video because what I do is I'm painting like the base colors while I'll talk about mediums or blending with mediums so I hope you don't get confused but basically we're just slapping like we're putting on all of the base colors of the model and I'm not using mediums as much here because I'm not really blending unlike when we kind of blended the base colors of the wings. I feel I need to create another video talking about Speed Paints 1.0. I'm pretty sure a lot of you guys still have those bottles and I will need to create a video that will show you how effectively you could use it with blending techniques, especially with medium. I'll also come up with a video showing you how to not really wet blend because again i do not recommend wet blending speed paints even speed paints 1.0 but how to effectively like use or maximize the reactivation property of speed paint 1.0 now let's go back to why i do not recommend using speed paints or any regular acrylic paints for wet blending Although I have a couple of videos on wet blending, like I said earlier, let me explain. You see, proper wet blending should start with a nice base color. So if you're blending like, for example, green on the other side and hmm, maybe yellow on the other side, so you paint a base color of green on the other side and yellow on the other side. Now you let this dry, make sure that this will not reactivate. Now, since you have a dried, kind of cured or varnished base colors of two colors, then you kind of like paint over on fresh paint, like a fresh green color near the center where you want to blend. And then fresh a paint, like put a fresh paint of yellow near the center. And then you blend both these colors together because the under, like the underpainting, the base color is not reactivating. You're focused on the actual blending of the two fresh paints, the two fresh colors. And you're not focused on like the coverage of these colors. In that manner, you do proper blending. Now, here's the main problem with wet blending acrylics. May it be a regular acrylics or speed paints. You need to be a fortune teller to be good at wet blending. <laughs> you see, acrylics dries fast, like almost as fast as watercolors. So, you basically need to work around the speed of blending acrylics. However, speed paints dry slower. But as the acrylic paints are drying, they produce a, hmm, a nice film on top of the painting or the paints. And this film, if you rub it while it's drying, will produce very, very nasty textures. 
So you do not only need mastery of the drying time of the paints, you need to be a fortune teller. Like you need to foresee when the paint should not be rubbed together or should not be wet blended because it's starting to dry. Don't get me wrong though, because you could do wet blending properly with acrylics like I said and of course with my two old, kinda old videos about wet blending. However, it's very tricky and I really do not recommend it. So basically, when you're wet blending acrylics, you need to learn when to stop. Like when to stop blending because the paint will dry eventually and once it start to produce that film, you will produce nasty textures. So you're better off like using airbrush or like doing fat glazes. So basically, after wet blending, you have to apply some glazes, fat glazes, or thin glazes to really refine your wet blending. So I highly recommend you just do like you master the, the technique of doing fat glazes and thin glazes because it's a little bit more effective and a little bit more efficient. Oh, by the way, you just saw in the video, I use a Citadel wash. Basically, I could use speed paint, but I don't want to overuse my speed paint because it's kind of hard to get here in the Philippines. Now we're finished with the base colors with speed paints. You could paint the teeth, of course, and then it's going to be ready for gaming. Now let's talk about the main part of this video. But I need to bring back the highlights of the wings, the details. There are so many nice details, so I needed to dry brush. This is actually my first time to dry brush with cuttlefish colors. And I was surprised it kinda worked. Cuttlefish colors are pre-glazed paints and I don't think I've ever used it like this. But then again, it can dry brush and it produces a softer finish than regular paints. So since I like how this came out, I'll be using my cuttlefish, like my cuttlefish colors, the sketch paints for dry brushing from now on. But of course, if you don't have cuttlefish, you could use your regular paints and your regular really old paints are perfect for dry brushing because you're not using them anymore. Normally, I do a quick matte varnish after applying the dry brushing before I do the speed paints later but with this miniature, I wanted to test if like the speed paints will harm my cuttlefish and it did not because I did not varnish before the speed paints. Now let's blend. In the first part of the video, you saw me use the Speed Paints 1.0 and blended the edges with mediums. But with this one we're doing, we're using it a little bit differently. Now we're using Speed Paints 2.0 and this takes so much effort to reactivate. Practically, it doesn't reactivate. Especially for me because I'm light-handed. So unlike earlier, we applied like speed paint and then blended the edges with medium. With this one, we apply the speed paint but don't let, like we won't really let it dry. While the paint is wet, we'll use mediums to blend it towards the lower part of the wings. Now this feels like painting with oils. You could like apply oils, a thin glaze of oils and then blend it with linseed oil or whatever you use for your oil painting. With this one, we're using mediums, the speed paint medium and we're blending the edges while the paint is still wet. And in this manner, you feel that you have more control instead of just using water. Of course, you could use water. But by using mediums, it feels like you're still painting with speed paint even though like you're using transparent medium. So one of the main advantages of using mediums to blend your paints or your speed paint is that it has the same, practically the same consistency as the actual speed paints. So it feels so like, it feels the same, it flows the same, and although it flows a little bit faster, although it feels the same. So the, the painting is very familiar even though you're doing like a very complex, not very, but a kind of complicated technique 
technique or complex technique already. Basically, you're blending, you're thinning down the speed paints. Here in the video right now, you'll see me like mix the speed paint and the medium so that I create a glaze paint. You can experiment with the amount of medium that you add to the speed paint to produce a glaze paint. For darker colors, I would recommend roughly around 2 parts speed paint and 1 part speed paint medium. For lighter, less saturated colors like palette bone, I recommend roughly around 3 parts speed paint or 3 parts palette bone and 1 part medium. Now you see me here painting a flesh tone over the inner part of the wings because it's too pink and it's kind of corny. So I had to like glaze a fleshy color. I think this is peachy skin. And then I will let it dry so that it looks a little bit fleshier than just looking like pink. So when you're creating a fat glaze paint or a glaze paint, basically you mix a little more speed paint than medium. Now you could see our mixing ratio kind of produce a very nice paint that filters the surface of the model but is not too saturated unlike when you did not add medium. But then again, it's not too thin and it won't run all over the place like a wash. Technically, a wash is also a glaze paint. However, washes, the main property of washes like we're going to do next is that it runs towards the crevices a lot more. A good wash for me is that it will run and settle around the crevices and will give you a really quick contrast without filtering like the surface, the raised surface too much. Now here you see you could quickly like convert your speed paints into a wash by adding more speed paint medium. For darker colors, you could go as thin as around 2 parts medium and 1 part speed paint. For lighter colors, on the other hand, you could go as simple as 1 part speed paint and 1 part medium. I must say though that all these ratios are just like guesstimates or estimates. I highly recommend that you experiment with your mediums and I'm pretty sure you'll enjoy your painting session. Now you see me here using Grim Black. And I really like this because it has a bluish tint to it unlike when you use non-oil. Non-oil kind of looks like, hmm, dark gray, cloudy, dark gray color. Hmm, similar to charcoal. Basically, I don't like it. Basically, I hate like the old school washes. Not Citadel. Citadel washes are great. But the old school washes that are great or perfect for fine scale modeling, those washes kind of dry cloudy and they kind of like when they go to the recesses and you have a really dark recess, the cloudy wash will kind of ruin the look. Oh, by the way, add a small amount of water to your speed paint and medium mixture so that your mixture will flow better, it will run all over the place and act like a proper wash. Now we just need to push the quality of the painting by painting more highlights and then painting more layering, doing a little bit of layering, adding a bit more texture with regular paints. And then we tone this down again with speed paint so that we smoothen down our layering and produce nice transitions. Basically, I call this stage the flip-flop stage wherein I'll put highlights, it's too much, I'll tone it down a little bit, especially the tail end of the highlight strokes so that I have nice gradation and I have nice flowing highlights like darker highlight colors to lighter highlight colors. So, I call this flip-flop because you'll flip-flop to fat glazes, highlighting and washes and highlighting and, and stuff like that. But I did not record the whole thing because it's not really like the focus of this video. I'll produce another video using speed paints for the flip-flop stage. 
So after maybe a couple of hours or a little bit more than a couple of hours, I'm very happy with the result. It's just a matter of really defining where you want your highlights to be. As usual, like I always say, define your source of light. Do a little bit of secondary light. You could use like speed paint or regular paints with the secondary light if you like. If you want it to be a little bit more subtle, you could steeple speed paints. But again, I need to produce a new video about like using speed paints for the finishing touches. Now it's time for our tip time. Now before I reveal a ton of thanks to all my patrons because without my patrons, this channel won't be possible. So I hope after watching this kinda longer than usual video, you you really like saw how you could use speed paints, no, not speed paints, but speed paint medium efficiently and effectively. I'll be doing a lot more of these techniques, not necessarily showing it in my other videos because I think my next video will focus on the metallics, speed paints metallics, and of course the painting of the texturing and that will be super fun. But with this one, I hope you find this video will be your hmm, complete guide to using the Army Painter Speed Paint Medium. Please do comment below if you think I kinda missed something or I'm kinda wrong, especially with the wet blending. But I do, again, I do have a couple of like good, I think, videos about wet blending on how to do proper wet blending. I also hope that I'm not stopping you to try to experiment with wet blending and wet blending with speed paints but I really do not recommend it especially if you're still learning. So basically using mediums, it will actually give you a bit more control because it has the same consistency as the actual paint that you're using. And also the dilution, the addition of transparency is very effective because mediums dissolves the paint and the binder, basically the paint, it dissolves and mixes together really well. Now the main difference of a glaze paint and a wash paint or a wash and a glaze, basically the glaze focuses on filtering the surfaces even like the top raised areas of the model. And with washes, it focuses on filling in the recesses so that you create a nice contrast. So to create like a good glaze paint out of your speed paint, you mix less medium. Now, if you want to create a wash paint or a wash out of your speed paints, you basically add more medium and a small amount or little amount of water. If you like numbers, we could do it like one part paint and then one part medium and then one part water or something like that. Basically, with that mixture, the converted paint will really act like a wash. I hope you like this video. Now I'm going back to painting so that I have a video in a couple of days. That's it, Pansit. I hope you like this video and watch these other videos.